Hey folks, Randy Newberg here. Thanks for watching this episode from season nine of Fresh Tracks. Did you know that our Fresh Tracks Plus platform now has a free option? Yeah, if you go over there, you can watch this episode and a few others ad free. And those of you who are paid subscribers, you already know, you can get a lot of exclusive content there. You get early access to content. You get invited to our exclusive live streams. And some of you even win an hour of FaceTime with me where we can plan your hunt. Go check out freshtracks.tv at the link below. Super early start. It's all my fault. Are you, are you rolling? <laughs> I'm rolling, dude. With some audio, not slow mo. That, this is sick, sick audio. All right. <laughs> we it's eight ten. We were, we were gonna leave at six thirty, but I'm glad I'm not in a rush today. Today we're going to Idaho. With me on this hunt is Marcus Hockett, my friend, coworker, hunting mentor, and camera guy. Marcus and I have done quite a bit of e-scouting on this area and have some spots that we want to check out. So that's the plan. It's going to be fun. Looking forward to it. This is a special permit for Southern Idaho. It's a migration hunt and we're hoping that there's tons of elk down here migrating out of the mountains. Got to throw this tent up, this wall tent, start a fire, hang out tonight, do a little talking about what we want to do tomorrow. We didn't see a single elk on the way in, but we also didn't really stop and look. Didn't see very many tracks either, but I'm remaining optimistic. Mainly it's gonna be cruising roads, looking for elk. Stop here, there, look, drive, glass, hike. And it's um, very flat and sagebrushy. There's not as much difficult terrain around and there's just roads everywhere. All of the flat ground has roads in it, but we haven't, we don't know where the elk are. There's a few canyons, so maybe they're hanging out in those canyons, I don't know. But it did snow, you know, we may not see them, but if there's tracks in the snow, we know that there's, they've been here in the past 24, 48 hours. It's, uh, it's a little bit before first light here. Didn't get a lot of sleep last night. Pretty anxious about trying to find some, some elk today. Hopefully we can find them. I've never killed an elk with my rifle. This is a late season December hunt. The elk are supposed to be migrating out of the mountains by the thousands. So the expectation was that we were gonna come out here and look over tons of bulls. So like, don't you think that they could be in like that like draw right there? Oh, absolutely. You know. You get these glory tags and there should be 350s behind every bush, but turns out you probably have to work for it a little bit. I don't know, this, we're 10 minutes into the hunt this morning, so. The way this unit sets up is there's, it's a huge unit. I think we looked on the map and it was 60 by 70 miles, like huge, huge unit here in Southern Idaho. About an hour into our hunt, maybe. Haven't seen any tracks yet, which is not a good sign. So I think we're not gonna mess around too much longer in this area. And we're looking and we say, what the heck, I'm tired of bumping around in the truck all day. We get out and do a little loop. 
Got a gun, my bullets, got my tag, got a backpack, game bags in there. So Marcus and I just got out here to the spot. It's the least eroded area we could find. This is one of the spots Marcus found when he was e-scouting. Um, so basically, we're gonna walk these rims and look kind of down into some of these draws, but it took us all of two and a half, three hours to get here. It was a long, long ways, and we've seen zero elk tracks. We weren't able to hunt in the mountain ranges because that wasn't in my unit. Uh, but we knew that there had to be a ton of snow and weather for these elk to come down and migrate. But once we got here, it became apparent very quickly that there were no elk in these winter ranges. They were not migrating out of the mountains. And it really wasn't that big of a shocker because I, we knew um, coming in that there hasn't been a lot of weather down here. Uh, there just hasn't been a ton of snow. It's gnarly stuff here. It's crazy how it just goes from flat, flat, flat to whoosh. Whoa. We got a nice little squall coming in. I don't think it's gonna last too long, but it's definitely gonna hinder our visibility for a little bit. Looked over this spot pretty good. Gonna go find another spot and look at it. The area that we're hunting is mainly BLM lands. And in my experience, BLM lands have roads everywhere. And this was no different than the other experiences we've had. Can't wait to find them. And of course, right when we got out of the truck, it started snowing. <laughs> but we're gonna go out here real quick. Take, take a little look-see. Is that an elk track? I think so. We found a elk track, it looks like. Dude, that's a lone big wall. He's probably, judging by the size, I'm going like up to 330, 335 maybe. You know, to be honest, I was too excited about it. I was excited to know that there's elk in the area. We don't know if these tracks are one day old, two days old, or like half a day old. Big news guys, we saw an elk track. <laughs> They just be like way the hell over there. Well, probably. I don't know. Yeah. But they were here. Yeah, they were. Within here. the last 48 hours. That's when it snowed. Five minutes until the sun sets. Marcus picked up some tracks and we've been kind of following around. Can't really tell because we don't know if it's three bulls. And we've seen three beds, but we don't really know if it's three bulls or how many bulls it is. We're gonna peek over some of these little ridges and see if we can pick them up. 
Dude, that scared the crap out of me. Is that what that is? Scared the crap out of me. Could be anywhere. Those fighter jets may have scared him out too. Scared the crap out of me. We just got back to camp. Took a long time. If we, hopefully we'll find something tomorrow. I think we got a pretty high likelihood of doing that. It's a new day. We are about to head out. But yeah, I'm optimistic that we'll find some elk. Really, really hopeful and uh, we still got a lot, a lot of this unit to cover that we haven't even laid eyes on. Oh, I got my truck, it's stuck. We're stuck here, high and centered on a rock. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to get a good glassing view because Marcus had to go to the bathroom. So I was like, oh, I'll just turn around and glass all this. Instead, I put it right on a rock. It's a loose, which is good. We just, it's like I can't get it out. Yeah. We got out, thanks to the help of Marcus Hockett. Thank you, sir, for that. I think those are deer tracks. That little bench. I think I'm gonna have to go down there and look at those tracks. When you get here and you're scouting and you're not finding anything, like if you draw a glory tag, be prepared to show up and have it not be what you expect and make sure that you have some backup plans. Like we knew that if we showed up and there aren't any elk in the sage flats, if we aren't seeing elk by the thousands, like we're gonna have to be going into some of these steep canyons, looking into these gnarly spots and get off the road. Hey folks, Randy Newberg here. Hope you're enjoying this episode from season nine of Fresh Tracks. It's been out on our Fresh Tracks Plus platform since we launched last September, and now we're launching season 10 over there. No matter where you watch us, whether it's on YouTube or whether you're one of our paid subscribers, we thank you. And if you want to check out Fresh Tracks Plus, I hope you go to the link below. It'll take you to freshtracks.tv. Whether you sign up for the free version over there or you sign up for the paid version, either way, we really appreciate it. Why are all those cows not eating? Is it because there's no food? It's not windy. I've seen them sometimes just hang out and face away from the wind, but it's not windy. Those cows are literally, there's not, there's hundreds of cows. None of them are eating, nor are any of them bedded either. They're all standing. Why? Why is that happening? Maybe is it, oh, the elk ate all their food. That's what it is. All of the elk ate all the grass, and now there's nothing left for the cows. What are they doing? 
really baffling view. <laughs> it's right, there's no grass out there. There's literally no food. All right, 1.30, man. We've been driving for a long time. Marcus and I are about to bang ourselves across the head with a two by four if we could find one. But uh, just made it to this cool little canyon over here haven't seen any tracks today but remaining optimistic we're gonna hike this rim for a bit it's cool country it's a lot better than the flat stuff we've been looking at You can just see so much country up here and just nothing. <laughs> That's all right, just keep on looking, huh? All you can do is just try your hardest. I mean, I feel like that's what we're doing. I feel like we're trying our hardest. It may not seem like it, but we are. We're trying our hardest. Well, in all this country, we, we do not see an elk. That's all right. Still, still out here hunting. Can't complain. Sometimes this happens, especially on a migratory hunt where there's no elk migrating. But I'm not gonna make any excuses. Just gonna keep on looking hard. You head back, back to the truck, look for another spot. It's all you can do, baby. It's all you can do. Shall we? You see those mountains out there? That's where the elk are. Out there, you see those mountains? That's where they are. That's what I think. They're where you find them. That's probably where we would find them. Zero. <laughs> Zero. Marcus is gonna go kill some some Hungarian partridge. Go get him, kid. This might be the only meat we get on this trip. Yeah! <laughs> Ran over there and got one. That thing's sweet looking. They're tasty buggers. What should we do for dinner? I don't care. We got that hun. Cook that sucker up. What's for dinner? Bird. Bird. Burning potatoes. <laughs> um, yeah, today was a slow day, but we checked out a lot of areas, crossed a lot of places off the map, and tomorrow the plan is we get up early because it's a long drive in there. Um, but we're going to go back to that spot where we saw the elk tracks the other night, last night. And there's supposed to be some fresh snow on the ground in the morning. I think it's going to be snowing pretty heavily when we get up and on our way out there. But we're going to 
hoof it and find some tracks, cut some tracks and go after some elk. And if there's some bulls in there, we're gonna find them. The, after those two days, it became very apparent that we have to f we have to find the needle in the haystack. These resident elk that live here all year, and where are those elk gonna be? They're gonna be in hell holes. Thirty six degree snow. This is called rain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh jeez. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Awesome. Oh, I say you win some, you lose most. The plan for that following day was to head back to where we found those three tracks. <laughs> we finally made it here. We've been glassing from the truck. As you can see, it's raining, not snowing. Thought we were gonna get some fresh pow, but we're getting some fresh raindrops instead. You know, I, I wanted to give it a good once over, uh, glassing from this knob, but with the rain and, the, and then it turned into snow, it just, it wasn't working out. And it became apparent that we just had, to, we had to go cover some ground. With the benefit of the fresh snow that was, we knew was gonna fall that morning, if you see a track, you know you're close to them. Cows. It could be freaking a half hour old. It could be if there was snow here, and it could be from a long time ago. But yeah, I feel like this is mostly this looks like fresh snow. And I'm like, are those elk tracks? I look at Marcus, he's like, oh yeah, those are elk tracks. <laughs> when I looked down, I saw some tracks. I wasn't sure what it was, but I just found a bed, some fresh poop. So it's got this elk's got to be in the vicinity. The tracks are becoming a little bit more visible. We're finding poop on the ground that is pretty darn fresh, like within the past hour or two. They're, you know, feeding in a circle. It's kind of hard to follow for a little bit, but then eventually we start making some serious progress on these guys. We, we follow them and we're following them. There's this canyon and we're on the rim now. And then there's just this one little cut in there that you can go down and Guess what, that's where they went. I ski and I go across them and I just saw something that kind of caught my attention. I turned back and boom, three bulls. It was the three bulls, the three musketeers. You, you draw this glory tag, you come out, it's, there's supposed to be elk everywhere. We don't see any and they're in the worst hell hole you can possibly be in, in the whole entire unit. The elk don't know we're there. We're being pretty stealthy. So I knew I had all the time in the world to get set up. I decide that the one that's bedded on the right, kind of facing away, is the one that I want to shoot. I didn't bring a spotting scope with us. Didn't really care at this point. I just knew that that was the best looking bowl down there. And I'm like, all right, here I go. Just completely whiff, no excuse here. Got him. Yep, his head's down, keep an eye on him. Keep an eye on him. Nope, shoot him again, his head's still moving. I think 
stop moving. Dude. <laughs> yes. Dude. <laughs> we got the bull. And now I'm thinking, oh man, we got a lot, a lot of work to do now. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh. This is my first bolt I've shot with a rifle, second bolt ever, and I don't know if I'll ever shoot another elk like that. Got good mass, holy smokes. Thanks, buddy. Man, I was really close to giving up on this, dude, like this hunt. If you just stick with it, I guess, you know, you get rewarded sometimes, so. That's kind of what this one's all about. You know, you get all these emotions after you, you harvest an animal. It's excitement, it's remorse, it's a feeling of accomplishment, relief. And I turn around to Marcus and I say, dude, it's gonna suck getting this thing out. And I just see him smile and he goes, oh, it's fine, we'll get him out, don't worry about it. I'm just so grateful to have him with me because he's got all the experience. He's hunted elk his whole life. And so anytime we go on these hunts together, I feel a little bit of relief because I know if there's something I don't know how to do, odds are Marcus knows how to do it. <laughs> the plan of attack, because this canyon wall is so steep, we we're in a quarter mount and then run loads up to the rim. As you're doing it, you're wondering, why did I put myself in this situation? There were times where I, honestly, I looked at Marcus and I said, I, I just want to cry right now. Thanks, dude. Keep at it, dude. Woo. I haven't been elk hunting a whole lot compared to a lot of people who've, you know, lived out west their whole life. This is my second bull. Nice. Um, we're gonna leave the meat here tonight. We're gonna each pack a load, a quarter each, and then we're gonna come back tomorrow and get the rest. Whoa, that's just, that's that's a lot of hard work right there. That's probably the hardest, I mean, definitely the hardest pack I've ever done. We stuck with it, we, we were rewarded for it. It was a lot of hard work, not so much physically, but mentally. That was the biggest hurdle for me was staying mentally strong. The cool thing is this is all public land. We came out here and we did it ourselves and, and you can do it too. So even though there weren't elk migrating down by the thousands in the sage flats and there weren't a huge desert bulls, we weren't able to look over 50 bull elk in one day. Um, the trials and tribulations, the cards stacked against us are really what made this elk what it was and I wouldn't trade it for anything.